Alright guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the practice algebra exam, starting with question number 14. Number 14 states, what is 12.39 divided by 5.25? So with this question, what I just want to recall is that remember when we divide, the number that's being divided is known as the dividend, and the number that's being uh, that it's being divided by is the divisor. Now remember, there's a couple ways that you can express quotients. One with being the division symbol, one as a fraction, and then this way as well. Okay. Now, one of the things that you might find very daunting when you look at this is the decimals. They can make things a little intimidating. Let's go ahead and approach this in a way where we don't have to deal with the decimals. And the way that you can do that is if you move this decimal over twice to make 5.25525, 5 as long as I do it to this value as well, it's mathematically sound. So now instead of trying to figure out how many times 5.25 goes into 12.39, now I'm questioning how many times 525 goes into 1239. Now, five goes in. 525 goes into 1239 twice, and you can um, logically deduct that by saying, if you take five and you multiply it by two, you get ten. So that's not going over twelve. But if you do five times three, you'll get fifteen, which is too large a value. <clears throat> so five times, or five hundred twenty-five times two, is ten fifty. And then when you make that subtraction, you'll get 9, uh, 3 minus 5 you can't do, carry the uh, take from the 2, 13 minus 5 is 8, um, 1 minus 0 is 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. Now, 5 525 can't go into 1 189, but what I can do to figure out how many times it can go in to the rest of this value is if I put a decimal here, that infers this decimal here. And this allows me to add zeros because one point or twelve hundred and thirty-nine is equal to twelve hundred thirty-nine point zero. So this will allow me to bring down a zero. So now I have to guess and uh, now I'm trying to figure out how many times five hundred and twenty-five goes into one thousand eight hundred and ninety. Now just like as I did with the last one, we can see how many times five hundred and twenty-five goes into 1890 by taking an estimate that 5 goes into 18 three times. If I did 4, it'd be 20 and that'd be too high. So we'll do 525 times 3, which is 1575. And then if I take the difference of that, I'm going to get 5, um, 8 minus 7 is 1. 8 minus 5 is 3, 1 minus 1 is 0. Now, because I have accounted for that decimal, I can add another 0 to allow me to solve for this rest of this um, quotient. Now I just have to figure out how many times 525 goes into 3150. Now, if I do the same thing as I did in the past two steps, 5 goes into 31 6 times. If I did 5 times 7, it'd give me 35, which is too high. So if I go at 525 times 6, I will indeed get 3,150. So our answer for our quotient of 12.39 divided by 5.25 is indeed 2.36. Okay, and just a little recap. If you want to make it a little less daunting, go ahead and make these whole numbers. As long as you move the decimal place two places here, and as long as you do it here uh, as moving two places to the right, it is mathematically sound. Okay? So 2.36 is indeed our answer. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Question number 15 states what is 
times 6.15. And our answers are 60.2975, 69.2450, and choice E. 75.1515. Okay. Now, again, this is a, just a simple multiplication problem, but there can be simple mistakes made with it. And I just want to point those out very, um, um, very detailedly. So we have 11.65 times 6.15. Okay. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 2 is 32. 1 times 5 is 5 plus, one, uh, plus 3 is 8. 5 times 1 is 5. Placeholder. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. Placeholder. Another placeholder for the hundredth place. Uh, 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 3 is 39. Carry the 3. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. And 6 times 1 is 6. Take the mathematical sum. 5, uh, 7, 14, 8 plus 6 is 14, carry the 1, 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 9 is 16, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 9 is 11, so 1 plus 6 is 7. Now, accounting for decimal places. Remember when you're multiplying decimals, uh, numbers with decimals, we're accounting for the total number of digits past the decimal places in the original question. So what I mean by that, this number right here has two numbers after the decimal place. This number here has two numbers after the decimal place. So, so we're going to be accounting for four total decimal places. Starting from the right, we're going to move left four places. One, two, three, four. So our final answer is 71. 0.6475. Okay. Alrighty. Let's, um, and then end uh, is indeed choice D. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. So this next question, question number 16 is 3x is greater than 9 and then a b c d e x is greater than third So for this question, 3x is greater than 9. With inequalities, we can treat them just as if they were equations. All we're doing here is saying that some value of x, in this case, is greater than some, is greater than some determined value. So remember with the little properties of inequalities, if the 
Um, symbol does not have a sign under it. It means that it's not equal to. So, okay. And then the sign, these likewise, does mean that it's equal to with its corresponding symbol as well. So, 3x is greater than 9. If we're going to treat this just like any standard equation, all we have to do is isolate x. So what I mean by that is if we have 3 being multiplied by x, to undo x and isolate it, we just have to undo what's being done to it. So we'll do the opposite. If it's being multiplied by 3, we'll divide both sides by 3. Remember, as long as you do it to both sides, it's kind of like a balance scale. And if you do this to one side, you have to do it to the other. That's just mathematically, um, it's almost like mathematical law. It's illegal if you don't do it. But as long as you do it to both sides, you are balanced and you are mathematically sound. So dividing by 3. The reason that you want to divide by 3, which is why it allows you to isolate x, is notice that this 3 is going to cancel out with this 3, because 3 divided by 3 is just 1. And going back to the identity of the multiplicative of 1, anything times 1 is itself. So x is now isolated. And now all you have to do is account for the other side of the inequality, 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Okay, so x is greater than 3 is our answer. Okay, and we'll be going over some properties of inequalities a little bit more in depth, but just remember that um, without the underscore, it means that it's greater or less than. It cannot be equal to the value. And then the underscore does indicate that it is greater or less than or, or equal to. All right. But if you guys always, uh, again, if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact or message me, okay? And this is going to be ending at question number 16. All right, guys, take it easy and uh, take good care, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.